infrared spectroscopy data is presented in an infrared spectrum, or IR spectrum, which looks generally like this. The x-axis, which shows vibrational frequency in units called wave numbers or inverse centimeters, is at the top. And for unimportant historical reasons, it runs from low frequency on the right to high frequency on the left. The y-axis is typically percent transmittance, which means that when a compound absorbs a particular frequency of light, you'll see a dip in the spectrum. Even though it's flipped upside down, we still refer to these as peaks. Each peak is characterized by two features. How far down the peak goes is called its strength, and it reflects the efficiency with which a particular bond absorbs photons, and it very roughly correlates with the polarity of the bond. More polar bonds tend to give stronger peaks in the IR spectrum. Peaks are generally called either strong, medium, or weak. Each peak also has a width, a range of frequencies absorb absorbed by a particular bond. Most peaks are quite narrow or sharp, but sometimes you will encounter a broad peak, which usually corresponds to a hydrogen atom that is participating in hydrogen bonding. The spectrum can be roughly divided into four regions corresponding to particular types of bonds. The lowest frequency range, below about 1500 wave numbers, corresponds to relatively weak bonds between fairly heavy atoms. In fact, almost all single bonds vibrate with frequencies in this region. Because most molecules contain lots of single bonds, this region can get pretty complicated pretty quickly, and we usually ignore it. It's referred to as the fingerprint region, though, because each molecule has a specific pattern of peaks in this region. The next region, from about 1500 to 2000 wave numbers, corresponds to slightly stronger bonds, double bonds. Most prominent in this region are carbonyl groups, which can be anywhere between 1450 and 1850 wave numbers, depending on the specific structure of the CO double bond. These peaks are generally quite strong and are usually pretty easy to spot. CN double bonds also appear in this region, but they are somewhat rarer than CO double bonds. Alkenes, CC double bonds, are usually between 15 and 1700 wave numbers. These peaks are often quite weak because CC bonds aren't very polar. Next, we come to the triple bond region, between 2,000 and 2,500 wave numbers. There are really only two types of triple bonds that are commonly seen, and they're reasonably distinguishable. CN triple bonds, usually in nitriles, absorb at about 2,250 wave numbers, and the CC triple bonds of alkynes typically absorb at about 2100 wave numbers. The final important region of the spectrum is the highest frequency, frequency region above 2700 wave numbers. This region involves bonds to hydrogen, the lightest atom. We won't go into all the details of why certain peaks appear where they do, but for now it's sufficient to recognize the patterns. The very highest frequency peaks are OH bonds, which can appear as high as uh, about 3600 wave numbers. If OHs are participating in hydrogen bonding, they can be severely broadened, sometimes spreading over several hundred wave numbers. Slightly lower frequency are NH bonds. A nitrogen atom with a single hydrogen usually gives a peak at around 3300 wave numbers and a nitrogen with two hydrogens typically shows a unique doubled peak in the same region. Last but not least are CH bonds. The highest frequency CH bonds, those between hydrogen and SP hybridized carbons, aren't very common, but they vibrate at about 3300 wave numbers, similar to where NH bonds show up. CH bonds with sp2 hybridized carbons are a bit lower frequency, 
just slightly above 3,000 wave numbers. CH bonds with sp3 hybridized carbons are nearby, but usually slightly below 3,000 wave numbers. And finally, the CH bonds of aldehydes show up in a distinct spot, usually around 2720 wave numbers, often as a slightly doubled peak.